Candace, 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 Candace. Two years ago, I thought that the left championed minority vo voices. I thought that the left championed women and always wanted to give us a platform. Uh, and then I, I publicly declared myself a conservative and I found out the hard way uh, that that's not exactly true. You're correct. They only champion women and minorities if they're parroting the same ideology as them. Otherwise, they're the enemy and they're willing to call you everything under the sun if you don't line up with their ideology. Now, in this video, I am going to be pointing out some of the things that I think are valid, and I'm going to point out some things that I think are just utter and total crap. So, we'll see, right? If you're a minority in this country and you don't subscribe to your emotions, if, if you want to have intellectual discussions and you want to have a debate, there's no place for you on the left. In fact, you will be rejected. In fact, they will actively try to destroy you in the way that they have tried to destroy me over the last two years. Many of you guys have followed my political transformation. Obviously, it started on YouTube uh, with just an idea that maybe conservative principles might be an alternative for the black community. Conservative principles might be okay if you weren't also trying to combine it with the religion that was used to enslave you. I questioned at the time, is it really possible that a man that was loved by the media, Donald J. Trump, they loved him, loved by black America. Every hip hop song that I listened to growing up, they wanted to be like Trump. Beyonce and Jay-Z were sipping poolside at Mar-a-Lago. He was the dream. Obama said that the American dream is to be like Trump. Very close, but his exact quote was, I may not be Donald Trump now, but just you wait. If I don't make it, my children will. Was it really possible that within 24 hours of declaring his political, his candidacy for the White House, he became a racist, bigoted, homophobic, sexist, rapist at one point, right? Is it real? Was that really possible? And I said, of course, no, it's not possible. There's absolutely no way that that's possible. Well, that's true. Once he started running for president, people started digging up dirt on him as much as possible. But he also was very busy saying really caustic things. So that didn't help much. And then I started asking myself some other questions. How on earth is it possible that a party that instituted slavery, Jim Crow laws, racial terrorism, and the KKK has the black vote? How is it possible? We gave up culture. The right gave up culture. That's how it's possible. That's how the left was able to do this. We gave up culture. The right became the party of traditionalism. The right became the party of trying to cram religion down everyone's throats or try to make everyone live in a way that assumes that everyone is Christian, that everyone is religious. The same religion that was used to enslave you. Now, to be fair, when I say enslave you, I don't mean enslave Candace Owens. I'm meaning it was used to enslave black people back in the day. Now, maybe one could say it's enslaving Candace Owens, but in a different way. But I feel that way about most religions. I feel it enslaves the mind. Over the course of the last 50 and 60 years, it seems that we've given up influencing pop culture altogether on the right. And to a certain degree, that's completely understandable. I mean, there isn't a climate that's more hostile to conservative principles than the entertainment industry. We see that everywhere. We see that when Joy Behar mocks the vice president for being faithful to his wife. Was that what he did? When, when we, she mocks the vice president for saying that he loves Jesus Christ. Was that what he did? I know that Pence's wife has been mocked for working for a school that's anti-gay. Totally anti-gay. But I guess that's okay with, with you, Candace, right? It's, it's okay to be anti-gay. And yet, you know, the entertainment industry is filled with a lot of gay people. So they, sh they should embrace that. They should, that sh that's great. Let's embrace an anti-gay ideology, a religion that says that gay people should burn in hell for eternity. You certainly aren't gonna win any accolades. The word is accolades accolades. In, in Hollywood, if you write a script and the protagonist uh, is a part of the nuclear family unit, in, in fact, you'll probably be chased out of Hollywood if you start to perpetuate conservative principles. 
As I've stated before, there is a push by some on the left to abolish the nuclear family. So you have a point, but you, you mix this up with the promotion of an oppressive religion. That's because the left has invested, they've infected, and they've infested culture at every single layer. I don't want to go back in time, culturally, to where the common ideology pushes gay people back in the closet and makes women feel bad for wanting to have careers. This is why uh, Kamala Harris, who will never ever be president of the United States, is talking about Tupac and Biggie music that never came out, which she claims she smoked marijuana to in college. Because she thinks, the, she thinks that black people are stupid, and the way that she's going to appeal to us is just by saying, I smoke pot and I listen to hip hop music. How insulting is that? Oh, it's insulting. But not as insulting as what you're saying throughout your speech here, that the right-wing ideology is all, is all for people like you. See, the thing is, the ideology you now have does the same thing as the left. If you don't march lock and step with their ideals, then you're a bad person too. If you don't march lock and step with their ideals, oh well, you must be communist, you must be, you must be a socialist, you must be, you know, an SJW. If you even remotely suggest that there should be some sort of social justice, yeah, you're, you're, now, you're now part of the enemy. So both sides pull this shit. Let's not make any mistake about it. This is why Hillary Clinton, who is still not the president of the United States, this is why she offered my community hot sauce, if you guys remember. Hot sauce as a, means, as a reason to vote for her. She offered us hot sauce, a Jay-Z, and a Beyonce concert. She never talked to us about policies. The left never talks about policies. I see what you're saying, but in this case, Hillary really does like hot sauce. Just saying. Because their policies have failed black America for the last 60 years. The truth is that the left and the Democrats never, ever, ever, ever want to fix black America because they stump on our issues year after year. If they, did, if they fixed our issues, they would have nothing to stump on or to talk about. They wouldn't be able to just continually keep calling the other side racist. They want black America to stay broken. They don't want us to ever have opportunities. They want to continue to give us handouts and not hand ups. You talk about the left never having any policies that help black people. But what do you have here other than some virtue signaling? Oh, hand ups. Like what? What are you referring to? Lower taxes? I mean, what? What, what has the right done to help the black community? Anything? Oh, well, if you just help the people up on top, it'll all trickle down. How does that help black people? Where are the policies from the right that help black people? You probably can't name any. Never in a million years did the left predict Donald J. Trump, and I'll tell you what they also are not predicting. They never predicted a minority awakening. They never thought that they could ever lose the black vote, ever. They've taken our vote for granted for so long. It would be nice if the left were able to focus on things like fatherless homes and the fact that that's a problem, you know? There, there are a number of things the left could focus on that would really help things more, but they're so focused on the, the new focus has been, you know, intersectionality. And we know what that shit's about. But things are starting to change, and they're starting to change because, and I'll tell you guys what the magic secret is, I'll tell you how I've been able to transform so many hearts and minds in the minority community. The secret is that I simply tell them the truth. The truth is on our side as conservatives. Truth number one, America is not a racist country. You're right. In general, it's not. The people that continue to tell us that have a vested interest in racism. In fact, they're actively now importing Nigerians to come do racist acts in this country a la Jesse, Jesse Smollett, right? Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. And I've seen people like Don Lemon on CNN and I've seen it pushed by a number of guests 
on mainstream news channels. And I've seen it in my Facebook feed, people sharing posts that say things like, that basically says, well, well, so what if, if Jesse Smollett uh, lied about something to get attention? Trump lies all the time to get attention. It's like, really? You, you, you don't even care that, that this, yeah, it's, it's disturbing, it's disturbing. Yes, there have been a number of hate crimes going on, and there's probably been a little bit of an increase since Trump got elected. But is that, is that directly because of Trump? Or is that just the route things have been going? Because, I mean, in the last two years of Obama's presidency, race relations were starting to take a dump. You know, is that Trump's fault too? This is MAGA country. No, this is your prison cell. And I hope you rot in it, Jesse. <laughs> Truth number two, abortion is murder. So you think the black community is concerned with that? Or you think the black community should be concerned with that? Why? There are so many fatherless homes. Um, you think those children should be brought up without fathers? Really? Now, now I'm not saying, you know, abortion's a good thing. I've, I've argued against, especially late-term abortions before. But, I mean, this, this doesn't seem like this is a good argument for you. Sorry. I ask myself all the time, what, why is it, doesn't it seem to you that progressive policies always lead to regressive results in the black community? It's amazing, isn't it? Abortion, so progressive. They want to move that forward. We need abortion. We have black women representing six to seven percent of the population, and yet we account for almost 40 percent of all of the abortions that are performed in this country. Essentially, you're arguing right now that numbers are everything. The amount of, of black people is more important than black people having a, a good standard of living. It's, it's really essentially your argument here. We have a sick and twisted Governor Andrew Cuomo celebrating that you can rip fetuses, you can rip infants and babies from their mother's womb at nine months, nine months. That, I mean, it's absolutely sickening what we're talking about here. And who is that going to impact the most? How am I going to operate my digital watch now? How am I going to operate my digital watch now? In New York City, for those of you that don't know, more black babies are aborted than born live. Fatherless homes are the problem here. If there weren't so many fatherless homes, there probably wouldn't be so many abortions. Now, you may argue that there should be more homes with fathers in them. Fine. But you mix this with a religious message at the same time, and they don't have to go together. A hard-hitting truth is that the most unsafe place for a black child is not on the streets, it's not when they see a police officer, it's in their mother's womb. Yes, but the right tends to not care about them once they're out of the womb. So what is this that you're doing other than virtue signaling? Nothing. More than half of the black population, the black population would be double today if it wasn't for abortion. We've lost 18 million black babies since 1973. How's that for a progressive policy? Is that what they're celebrating? No, that's, that's not what they're celebrating. But it's a nice straw man, and it's a way to, to you know, make your enemy look worse. The left needs God. The left doesn't need God. The left needs to stop replacing God with something that's worse. Truth number three. Racially motivated police brutality is a myth. It's simply a myth. In some cases it's a myth, and in some cases it's not. You know, it's like Amish candy bars. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you feel like making a quilt. But father absence is not. The number one issue facing black America is that fathers have been removed from the home. It's that they have been incentivizing father absence. See, and there you have a good point. But you're combining it with this God message. These things don't have to go together, you know. We can push for fathers to be in homes. We can push for healthy families. We can push for that without pushing the God message at the same time. When the single motherhood rate jumps from 23% in the 1960s to a whopping 74% today, we have a problem. It's a problem that the left does not want to talk about. It is the destruction and the breakdown of the family. You're right. 
But that doesn't have to be mixed with a God message. It doesn't have to be mixed with religion. Truth number four. There are 3.6 million black children living below the poverty line. There are 4 million Hispanic children that live below the poverty line. And yet Democrats want us to put illegals first. As much as I'm seeing the Democrats, or many Democrats, argue for open borders, I'm certainly not seeing them say illegals first. You know, that's not a truth, that's a myth. I say no thank you, I say build the wall. <laughs> it's actually incomprehensible what has happened to the black community over the last 60 years. I say I don't want a green new deal, I want a black new deal. More virtue signaling, cute mottos, that sort of thing. You know, the kind of thing that you usually attribute to the left, but you're doing it on the right because, well, you know. And the good news, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is that that actually can be free. It doesn't cost $93 trillion. AOC is ridiculous. There, there's, you know, she's young. She's, you know, what, what people associate with young. Uh, you know, she doesn't have the experience to know how stupid some of the things she says really is. Especially how about that, oh, uh, they could spend that three billion on other things. No, uh, three billions in tax breaks isn't money that you can do things with, right? You know, she's, she's, she's idiotic in, in a number of areas, but she gets people talking, I guess, so. But yeah, AOC is ridiculous. First and foremost, stop selling us our own oppression. Stop taking away our self-confidence by telling us that we can't because of racism, because of slavery. I've never been a slave in this country. Stop telling us that we need to be obsessing over our past when we should be obsessing over our future and the potential that we have. That's a good message, but it has nothing to do with policy. Stop having a culture which tells us that we should want to be hip-hop artists and basketball players when we should want to be doctors and lawyers. When has the left told black people that they should be basketball players and hip hop artists? We need to stop idolizing people like LeBron James and start idolizing people like Dr. Condoleezza Rice and Dr. Ben Carson. Ben Carson as a brain surgeon? Sure. Ben Carson as a politician? You've got to be kidding. How about give us school choice? That would be nice. Stop murdering our offspring. The theme today is, is what makes America great? And I'll tell you the answer. It's our philosophy. Margaret Thatcher said it best, Europe was created by history. America was created by a philosophy. Our philosophy, so perfectly laid out for us by Thomas Paine ahead of the Revolutionary War, is common sense and freedom. Notice that none of those things say religion. Welcome to our ool. Notice there is no P in it. It was common sense then that the colonies shouldn't have been governed by the British monarchy. It was time for an American exit. It's common sense today that the black community and the Hispanic community should not be governed by liberal ideology. It's time for a Blexit. And the Blexit answer does not have to be God, it does not have to be the Bible, it does not have to be religion. It's common sense that the left does not care about racism, they don't care about sexism, they don't care about misogyny, they don't care about any of that stuff, they don't care about sexism. What they care about is the politicking of fear. When the left results to calling me, as I have read it, a racist, a sexist, a Nazi, because I really have the look going for me, <laughs> and the words have completely lost their meaning, they have no arguments anymore. It's common sense to me that conservatives need to start invading culture. If they could do this without inserting religion everywhere, you know, I wouldn't be so against it. Because we are the party that believes first and foremost in God. And that's exactly why I hope you don't get power. We don't need dominionism running this country. And in case you guys forgot, it was our belief in God and in Judeo-Christian values that inspired culture in the first place. Um, no, um, they didn't, it didn't inspire culture in general. It may have inspired the culture that we have here, but it didn't inspire culture in general. That's more dominionism bullshit. Sorry. You know, what about all the cultures that existed 
before this. Or no, we shouldn't we shouldn't think about that. Let's just let's pretend that didn't exist. No, sorry. Florence is arguably one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's dripping with some of the greatest masterpieces from the Renaissance. It was an explosion of art, of design, of aesthetic sensibility, and almost 100% inspired by God, Christianity, and the church. So what? A lot of great art and music is inspired by a number of things. So what? Conservatives, we are culture. We can invade culture. We can inspire and touch communities. Conservative principles can inspire great works of art and great movements. But we have to give in. We have to say that we are going to fight the cultural war. When I first started on YouTube to hold the mirror up to ourselves and the things that we do wrong, I was mocked by the left and the right. I was told that there was no place for humor, that I couldn't make YouTube videos that were a flash in the pan, that we had to be more stern, more, more serious, more austere. And that's incorrect. We have to meet people where they're at. We have to be funny. We have to be satirical. Doing billboards about AOC is great. She's giving us a lot of content right now. I want to wrap this up by pleading with all of you to realize that the left is terrified right now because it takes just 5%. If we move the black vote 5%, the path of least resistance to defeating the left is awakening the minority community, awakening black America. We've been lied to, we've been abused, we have been used, and we are suffering. If we make an effort ahead of 2020 to embrace the black community, to embrace culture, we can save this country. You're not gonna save it with religion. Subtract the religious part of it, and you might have a good message, but you're not willing to do that. You got, it has to be this, this combo deal, and, and sorry. So we're probably fucked. And above all else, uh, just to thank God, because a year and a half ago, I was on YouTube, and what makes America great is how quickly your life can transform if you stop viewing yourself as a victim and start viewing yourself as a victor and a piece of the American dream. God bless. Like I've said throughout this video, she says some reasonable things, she has some reasonable critiques of the left, but uh, she has to mix the whole religious thing into it and ruin the whole thing. So, oh well.